Good evening, everyone. I'm Lauren Cohn. This time, we aren't the underdogs or defending world champions. The Phils have the best regular season record in baseball and maybe a big target on their backs. So how are fans coping under the pressure? Good evening, everyone. I'm Lauren Cohn. Council President Anna Verna is unapologetic about her own participation in drop and really isn't leading any charge to look at how it spends your taxpayer dollars. More fallout tonight from the sexual harassment saga at the Philadelphia Housing Authority. Now the woman whose job it was to investigate sexual harassment allegations is talking to us. Now health officials are concerned the superbug will spread across the United States. It's the bottom of the hour. Let's take a look at your top stories at 530. And good evening, everyone. I want to get right to it. The rescue of minor number 24 right beside me. If we can take this fall, another wonderful sight to see another minor coming up safe and sound as they release him from the oxygen mask and the celebrations and the cheers. Let's listen in just a little bit. Well, Claudia, I want to give our viewers some perspective because we're talking about a hole that's 28 inches in diameter. The Phoenix is 21 inches. It's 10 feet high. It weighs 900 pounds. And it's my understanding when they drilled this hole, I mean, talk about precision. What's so interesting is the technology. They had video cameras throughout the entire time, and, and I guess you can attest in some of your interviews out there today that they had to make sure that they were drilling correctly because if they didn't, if they were off at all, and that's why they had the video cameras continuously and made a mistake, this might not have been as successful as it has been. What's really troubling here is that we're resistant, and the problem is they say they're working on a new round of antibiotics, which sounds like good news, but isn't it more responsible for us to build up our immune system so that we don't have this problem being resistant to antibiotics? Joining me to talk about this bizarre story is attorney Amy Feldman. It's always good to see you, Amy. Good to see you, Lauren. This is very unusual. Can this actually work? All right, another interesting topic is the cost of defenses. This one out of Missouri. Judges are briefed on what a prison sentence might cost. An example here, $37,000 for a three-year sentence versus just under seven grand for probation. Look how good you look. Look at that camera That's right so there. That's so nice of you. Hello, everybody. I have a theory, though, about the Phillies. What I, is it? I, this is scientific. I worked on it all night. Really? Ready? I worked okay. on it all night. Let's have it. The cup is half full. Is that right? We need right? to get out of this we need therapy thing here. Really? I'm, I'm buying the whole couch theory, but here's the thing. Mm -hmm. They don't play well in that ballpark. They don't hit well in that ballpark. Here's the problem, Lauren, So with, with your theory. So we have to be optimistic because they're going to do better. And this is really cool because I know a lot of people out there are addicted to this. This is the iPad and we're following all types of election trends tonight. So I want you to zoom in and take a look as I show you. Uh, we're going to click here and this is a Facebook page. And what's very cool is people are tracking who can vote on Facebook. You can click if you voted on Facebook. We're taking a look. There's more than 7 million people that have voted already. So it's kind of fun to follow your friends to see what they're doing. Um, I'm going to minimize that and bring up Google and show you some of the latest trends. Uh, the hot topics are voting. The hot searches are exit polls right now. So you can click on that. Lo it loads and it gives you some of the cool trends. You can also follow Twitter on this. And um, my producer Jackie is sitting here. She's taught me this literally in the last 20 seconds. And um, I'm kind of addicted to it now. So while I send it back to you in the studio, I'm just going to sit here and play and, and figure out what's going on tonight. OK, so joining me now to talk about this is political commentator Dan Proft and financial analyst Todd Schoenberger. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So let's start with reaction, Todd. This is where our tax dollars are going. We bail them out and we get this. And there are plenty of people who want those jobs. Dan, Chrysler suspended the workers without pay, but if these were not union workers, they would be fired. Sharon Crowley here now. We can breathe a little easier. <laughs> the emergency bra, wow, on the market. What's what are that? they making for men? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> And I would Blair's say that. Now he wanted to know that. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it doesn't seem like such a disaster if everyone's ripping off their brassiers. That's right. I, how did I know you were going to go there? Well, that doesn't make sense. Safety. Safety comes Safety? first, John. I don't know. Well, wait and Co see what they come out for with for men. men well, they can't be cups because men don't go around with cups all the time. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Mo most That's bad pictures and stuff. That's because I don't post anything on Facebook. You don't? No. All right. Well, I won't pry. But are you seeing anybody? Right now? Why you want to know? Yeah. Do you want to go have dinner? Is that why? Yes. Or do you see anybody? Are you married? <laughs> I'm not married. Are you married? No. 
It's a perfect How match. How many people out there aren't married? <laughs> Raise your hand. They are still celebrating here at the Spring uh, Field Country Club. The Irish band just stopped playing, sort of indicative of the night. Pat Meehan still mingling around with his supporters. Very gracious tonight. He took a phone call from Brian Lentz. He said he was gracious, but Pat Meehan was up on the stage tonight, and he said he claimed victory, but this is not a victory for all the people that don't have jobs out there. And throughout this campaign, that is what he has talked about, the fact that the economy needs to turn around and that people need jobs. And I spoke with him a short time ago. Critics say NPR violated free speech by firing Williams for what amounts to censorship. And joining us now to talk about it is Juan Williams himself. Thanks for being here. Good evening, Lauren. How are you? I'm good. All right, since this happened, it's the big story. You're the big story, and public sentiment is mostly in your favor. Surprised to be the big story here, Juan? Did you check out the front page of the sports section in the Philadelphia Inquirer today? It had a special offer for a free virtual Phillies rally towel. With the offer came a strange looking box. This is it right there. I didn't know what it was either, but here's how it works. That box is actually a barcode. It's known as a QR code. Smartphone users can access the information by downloading free barcode scanning applications. They then scan the code. The app automatically links the user's phone to the information. In this case, the rally towel. The city of Philadelphia is also using QR codes on tourist maps. Visitors can scan the codes for more information about each site they visit. This technology is being used by television shows like Glee and even bars and restaurants here in the city. So how does this really benefit consumers and will QR codes catch on? Matt Schaefer is the co-founder of Mashin.net. Thanks for coming in. Look, I want to show you that the water department crews have finally left. These guys, you know, suffering sheer exhaustion from being up for two days, but still here along Main Street. And we're down at the end, which when you go down to Ridge Avenue, this part has been closed off. All right, and Philadelphia District Attorney Seth Williams is joining us now to talk about bullying, an important topic. Thank you so much for being here. Listen to this. He was lured to a, a group of kids in a neighborhood they threatened him, they stripped him naked, they recorded it and posted it online according to court documents his mother read to Metro. Now the footage drew, I, I can't even read this, drew hundreds of mocking comments and showed the youth begging for his clothes back as tormentors pulled his legs apart and he struggled to cover himself up. I mean, it's just awful. Yeah. And that's all for us tonight, but Fox 29 News at 6 starts right after this, so stay with us.